you go about periodizing your, your nutrition to help your performance? You mentioned a couple of tips already, but if we dive in a bit deeper. Yeah, let's do that. So periodizing your nutrition just means matching your nutrition intake to your output. And there's a few different ways to do that. Um, yeah. But it also doesn't mean that you need to adjust everything. So the main thing you want to adjust when we're talking about periodizing is your carbohydrate intake. So in theory, the longer and harder you train, the more that you need. So to optimize that, you want to put more in. Again, I guess, you know, the theory versus the practical are, are two very different things. And it's like, yeah, that's great, Jess. I'm about to go and do a 3K session on the field and you want me to eat a giant breakfast. Like, I'm not great at breakfast. That kind of yeah. doesn't work. So, you know, the, um, the, the art is in then how it's actually applied. But, yeah, the, the concept is matching particularly carbohydrate intake to that output. Um, let's bring caffeine into that equation. So, you know, obviously you'll get a good result with caffeine um, in the acute phase, but how do you, how do you do it over a long season? And, and particularly if you're playing finals where um, you're still getting good results from, from supplementing caffeine. Yeah, look, caffeine is, um, is a, is a supplement that I'm very pro um, when used in the right way, like from a health benefits point of view, there's definitely, depending on how much we're talking about, um, you know, if we're talking a couple of coffees kind of a day, like that very much sits within recommendations. And, and like, yes, there are um, individual thresholds and people metabolize it differently. But if we're talking an acute performance outcome, the mm. evidence is clear. That caffeine has a positive physical, central nervous system, psychological performance benefit. It, um, but you do need to be quite targeted with it and you don't necessarily need a whole heap. So the research tells us one to three milligrams per kilogram. So you think about an 80 kilo athlete, that's 240 milligrams. What are some ways that you, you know, upskill yourself? What, what's your, some of your favorite ways to, to um, you know, hone your craft and, and get better uh, year by year? Yeah, look, it's probably changed over the years, to be honest. Like initially it was on Twitter, reading all the papers, connecting with all the big dogs, like, you know, trying to learn from them. Um, also like podcasts, you know, obviously times have changed a bit, but like I was really fortunate to go to some great clubs when I travelled overseas, like went to Arsenal, went to AS Roma just to see what that – so there was all this kind of like structured learning, but then there was also just a lot of um, experiencing different kind of environments – the ones that want to put on muscle really quickly and, uh, and bulk up, how do you, uh, you know, what's the best way to, to go about that for, for young developing athletes that need to put on critical mass? Yeah, look, there's, you know, obviously a few ways to, to go about it. Like education is, is key. Um, not just telling them what to eat, but showing them how to eat. So I know that you've had Simone Austin on here and, you know, she spoke a lot about cooking classes. So, there's a lot of that. Um, it's not just, it's called procedural knowledge, which is the ability to apply what you've learned. Um, but then I also talk to them a lot about the best way to put on weight. And look, AFL preseason, it's pretty hard to put on a significant amount of weight because of the amount of Ks that they're clocking up um, and the amount of output. But I do talk to them about their body and, and how it's going to develop because, you know, men in particular, you know, they're, they're developing up until 21, 22 years of age. So, like, depending where they're at from a hormone profile will really depend on potentially how much weight they'll put on. And I like to talk to them about their house being, or their body being a house. So their muscles are the bricks and the cement is the connective tissues, the tendons and the ligaments. And, you know, just because the bricks, we can maybe put on a bit of weight and get them big and strong. But if these connective tissues don't have that ability to, to move with it, that can present a lot of problems. What would be your advice for for those that are under 18 years of age and, and uh, yeah, with supplements? Yeah, it's, um, it's an interesting one. It's, you know, I definitely talk to them about the, the pyramid of a height, like our pyramid and level of hierarchy. So you imagine that base and foundation at the bottom, the stuff that's really going to cement them and help them be their best selves and also like influence their health and performance. And, and that's that education piece around energy input matching um, physical output and then it's also just educating them on where they're going to get their bang for buck, um, how the basics done right will be the thing that pays the dividends, educating them around the risks of supplements um, and talking to them and, and also understanding what, what they're wanting to use and why and then looping that back into why that food first approach 
um, is going to is going to be the way forward. And there's one for AFL men's, and then one for specific for AFL women as well. So, what would be the two sort of differences in, in advice? Those two different ebooks. Yeah, look, to be honest, they're they're quite similar um, because again, the recommendations are quite similar. Like how to prepare for training, how to prepare for a game. Um, there are some differences around some of the options in terms of preferences, just based on what I've kind of witnessed working in the two. Um, yep. And there's also a little bit more information about um like uh hormones and obviously like what you know women need to consider in menstruation and that kind of thing as well but they are very similar um because the recommendations are are very similar but yeah those ebooks are complements of the first lockdown um because it was like this project i really wanted to do for a number of years but never had the bandwidth or time to do it and yeah. covid was like right it's time to do this and Get it done. You know, now we're just rolling them out to, to everyone. They um they took a lot of time and energy. So I'm pretty proud of them, yeah.